Hello, people on the internet. Today, I'm going to continue working on my 83 Audi R4. If you are new and you'd like to get caught up on why tickling strangers in a bus station may get you punched in a mouth, up above my head is a link to a video that will not help you in that situation. When I got here this morning, I decided to add a little bit more material around the other rear speaker on the deck lid, just as an extra bit of strength because this stuff is made out of cheesecloth. The goal for today is to get the rest of the stereo installed because then I have something more important that I have to do to this car, which I'm gonna put in this video also. I'm gonna run all this speaker wire for the rear speakers up through the center of the transmission tunnel underneath this console and the carpet. I think that's just the more logical place to do this. Is this thing, pull the wire through. Come through wire, come through. There you go. to do some cutting. I'm not going to trust any of the wiring that was hooked up to this head unit before. I'm going to wire it myself from scratch because wiring a head unit is extremely simple. So first things first, power, which they have. Oh, I bet you that's what that wire back there is for. This wire wasn't attached to anything. It was just stuck down beside the battery, which is actually the power that was wired up to this harness going to the old head unit. That means they had the power wire going to that head unit routed underneath the carpet of the car with no fuse on the end of it. It was just routed straight connected to the battery. That's bad. This trash is nonsense out of here. This thing had way too small of a gauge of wire for the ground for the head unit and it had like three junctions in there. So I'm making my own ground a new one and I'm using brown wire because that's what it's supposed to be for the ground circuit. Brown. That matters. Head unit ground goes right here. See? Brown. Just like all the other wires. Something I feel is easily messed up when hooking up a head unit is the illumination slash dimmer circuit because it almost appears like it's the same thing, but it's not. The difference is an illumination circuit requires 12 volts constant when you turn on the lights at night that light up all the interior lights. A dimmer circuit, when you do that, when you use the dim switch in the interior, it will vary the voltage. So it'll go from 12 volts down as it dims the lights where illumination, it just doesn't do that. So it can cause issues on some head units. So I need to figure out which wire uh, they had hooked up in here. The only wire that didn't really make sense behind this dash was this purple one. And if you follow it, it goes right here to a black wire with a white stripe. So why the fuck <laughs> they have the wire hooked up to the switch for your door when you open and close the door and it turns on the light up here, but it's hooked up to a ground. Put my hand up on your hip. When I dim, you dim, we dim. I need a ground. So you look up here, I got a gray wire of a blue stripe and a brown wire. And that goes to the illumination for my climate control. And down below here, these two were just wire tied together. So last wire. Wrap some cloth Tessa tape around this. And there you go, finished product. Nice, fresh, clean. Put some cloth Tessa tape on there just for chafe protection. Last step before I can test the head unit. I'm gonna put a fuse. One of these guys right here. I promise that's the leather on the chair. I'm not farting. Using a 10 amp fuse in this to match the head unit. That's what the head unit is rated at. Honestly, the only thing I'm gonna use on here is the external mic for Bluetooth for phone calls. Other than that, I'm not gonna use the USB, nor does it have steering wheel controls. Power? Yay! Cool. It works. Friend speakers. Time to put this delicate motherfucker back in. This is extremely nerve wracking. Oh yeah, seatbelt. It's in. 
these are cups. You could probably grow a, a melon or a cucumber out of this, but that's not what I'm gonna do. What I'm gonna do is make it not sound terrible. Go in your hole. Oh, good, now that got hot. Stuffing that foam down in there will help out with the depth of the trout salmon. Almost broke my back window, did you see that? That's what I get for making fun of b bass, bass fish. This already feels so much more sturdy back here. Just from redoing this. Go inside your new hole. It's like in the mid 70s right now. It feels so good outside. There isn't a cloud anywhere. It's just perfect blue sky. All I got left to do is to put the seat in the car and pop the head unit in. Well, this thing is heavy. No wonder the seat sliders are all scratched up. This thing weighs a ton. This is it right here. Once it's in, it's in. That's what he said. It's in. It looks so good. I need to peel off the little tape, protective tape. It looks so good. I can't tell you what was playing on the radio, but it was 80s and it, it rhymes with Ool, ool, ummer. I love the way this looks. So it's got this little door. You can flip up right here and there's a front facing USB and SD card slot. I have never known anyone to put music on an SD card. That's just weird. And a 3.5 millimeter jack, but it looks like a little tape deck. It's so cool. And it also has Bluetooth. So you can listen to like satellite radio or Pandora or whatever. I got one last thing I'm gonna do before I take this to my house and start taking it back apart again. And that is this dried out deteriorated shift boot that I think is just vinyl. I don't think it's real leather. I know that is real leather. It's just really old and cracking bad. Plastic nut that holds this thing together. So I'm gonna use my crescent hammer here. That's about the only good purpose these things other than the hammer. I gotta put my camera down. And then I think it just held in a clips. These guys right here, little metal bananaramas. Oh, fuck you. Got it. That is, that's tough. They do not make this thing easy to take out. I mean, for good reason. You wouldn't want your shift boot moving around on you, but still. Look at that grody ass old boot. I guess the little side probably goes up front. That would make the most sense at least. Little side up front. Okay, got the top side. Holy shit. Ouch! And I thought the first part was hard. This sucks too. Get in your hole, you fuck. Come on. Oh, well, it looks so much better. Like at all, at all. I need to clean under this car so bad. I, I need a dry ice blaster a little bit to do it correctly. I mean, I saw pictures before I bought this thing of the underside. Oh yeah, this thing is actually super clean under here. I mean, it's dirty, like dirt, but... Wow, that's really light, jeez. It's got lowering springs on it too. I'm so excited about the underside of this car. This thing is super clean. I mean, the brake rotors have rust on the hats. 
but they're not cryo treated. But everything else, like it just needs to be super cleaned. This, honestly, this needs dry ice blasting. That would be the correct thing to do and this would look absolutely mint. But like all the hardware is nice on here. See what I mean though? This, this is way too stretched on an eight inch wide wheel. I'm not, I'm not liking it. I'm not a fan of stretched tires on a car like this. Ooh, these are still hot from driving, jeez. See all that dirt? That was just from driving home. Oh my God, this wheel is so light. I was super torn whether or not I was gonna put aftermarket wheels on this car. And every aftermarket wheel I was looking at, I was trying to find something that was identical to these Ronal R8s. The Ronal R8 is the correct wheel for this car. It just, it, I think they look fire. It's just, it's such a simple, classic looking wheel. And this, they deserve refinishing because they're all pitted on the edges and the paint's chipping. These were refinished already once, so. And now for the fun part. I get to use my wheel and tire machine for the first time. I haven't had a chance to really use this thing yet. Stinky fish hair. Stinky like fish. If you don't think that that air stinks like bad fish, you're wrong. Don't critique me if I'm doing this slightly wrong. I haven't done this since high school. It's been a long time. always sucks the hardest is getting the tire up because it's stretched oh come on uh, finally don't slip ha show you for slipping Fish air. I don't know why this stuff was called goose poop because I never pay attention to goose's poop enough to know what goose poop looks like. This is so much better than having to pay someone to do it. <laughs> Done. So I was wrong. These wheels were not originally white. They were originally champagne. The inside of the barrels is champagne on them. And these things are super light. So I'm glad I'm sticking with these wheels. Question is, what finish will they be after I get them sandblasted and powder coated? So as for tires, I got some new ones and I went with another set of Continentals. These ones though are the Extreme Contact Force. These are not sponsored. I bought them and I think they're actually kind of expensive, but uh, these are 200 treadwear compound, whereas these contact sports, I think are 340. I could be wrong, but yeah, these are 340s. Tires were in perfect condition, but it's a 205 and that's just too stretched for me. So these ones are 225s. So it'll be a nice meaty looking tire on there. It's a 225, 45, 15, but yeah. That's the next thing I'm gonna be doing on the Audi, but what you guys are probably more concerned about is the little Green Ranger over here. I'm gonna start working on this tomorrow. So you're gonna be getting a lot of Ranger content because this is a pretty big job I'm gonna start undertaking. And this will be the last time that this truck is drivable until everything is transferred over. I'd be lying if I said I wasn't a little bit nervous about doing this because this truck means a lot to me. So um, just, this is, this is it. I'm going to down the truck until everything is switched over. So I will see you guys soon with another video. Bye-bye.